Your mama goes to college. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today we're going to be talking about a situation where you may have good golden light, but you have the blinds open and the sun is in the direction shining in. Right now it's not too harsh, there's actually a cloud in front of it, but like right now you're going to see in the frame over here that it's the best angle for this type scenario. So we can easily kind of step back into it. You see the camera right here. I'm actually going to step back a little bit further with the angle through the lens over here in this camera you have that sun shining and kind of putting a flare on the lens. Well, we don't want that. We want a nice clean image that's not gonna be looking crazy and, and weird and stuff. We're gonna be talking about how to get rid of that and how to deal with that. And this will work across the spectrum of whether you have some kind of golden hour light coming in or if you have a serious high powered sunlight coming in kind of in the middle of the day or about three o'clock where the sun's kind of off to the side, puts a a really harsh shine on the floor. This will kind of go underneath that umbrella of what you do in that situation. So as always, I got my transmitter talking to my flash. I have my wireless trigger so that I can be telling my camera to take a photo and I don't have to actually touch the camera except to change some exposures. So what we're gonna do is do our regular exposure. We're gonna do exposure for the ambient light. I have my f-stop at 6.3. I have my uh, ISO at 320 or ISO, whatever you want to call it. And I have my shutter speed right now for this exposure. Looking through my live view, I, had it, I have it at a fourth of a second. So that's longer than normal, but we don't have a whole lot of sun. The ambient light in here is really low. So I have to put that shutter speed just a tad slower. I put my focal point in the middle of the image because I want it to see from here to infinity. So focus on something in the middle. Sometimes with your focus, you may have to put it on the chair. You may have to put it on something with contrast right there. Uh, that will help you stay on focus because especially in darker areas, it's trying to grab for something. So if you have something that is dark and something that is light like we have over there, you can put your focus point on that and leave it uh, it's the single shot focus. Leave it there the entire process. Let's go ahead and take our first image and our white balance is set to auto. Take the shot. Okay, we got the blown out lights because we're exposing for some of the shadows. It's a darker room. So now we wanna look in our live view on our camera and we want to go a little bit darker. Now because these lights in here are not that bright, we don't have to go our normal 50 to 60 shutter speed that will bring that down a lot because these are very, very low output lights. So right now I'm only at a 30th of a second. A little trick that I do so I don't get weird colors or that helps a little bit and it makes it a little faster in, in post is that I turn my transmitter talking to my flash, I turn it all the way off. The reason I do that is because when I do that and I have it set to automatic white balance, it will get more closer to the automatic white balance for white that actually looks true and then when you turn this on for some reason it kind of makes it like an orange looking color and it makes it muddy looking so we're going to set my my flash i have it at uh one thirty second of power so what i can do with this step off in the corner payel see what that looks like oh yeah good nice and bright whitened up the walls quite a bit now it's dark outside but there's there's sunlight coming through the blind, so what can we do? Well, we can, first of all, pop off the flash once, see what happens. That actually doesn't look that bad at all. It's not as big a problem as I thought it was going to be. I'm gonna come over here and expose for this one too. Pop that flash off for that furthest away part. And then, like always, we got our fourth shot for the windows, our whoop shot. Click it one more time at the same exact exposure, same exact everything, leave your transmitter on, and it'll do the same white balance for that outside the darker parts. So let's take our images back to the computer and we will set this up and see what it looks like in post. Here we are at the computer, as I like to do. So you can see exactly what I'm doing and why I do everything because to me, it helps me remember better and learn easier if I know why I'm doing something. So click the top one, shift, click the bottom one, right click, open with, I go into my classic, classic kind of guy, 
open. So to bring up this little grayed out thing, if they are dark gray, it is not selected. You have to select them all. Now you can also click all photos and then go down here to import. You can see at the top, it just finishes up and then you hit the, the letter D on your keyboard and that will bring you from library to develop. So you can see right off the bat, this sucks. Like there's no question about that. Uh, even when I turned off the, uh, see the light coming in right there, that's kind of the problem we're gonna talk about today. Uh, the white balance is junk. Like these lights are very dim, but they do a lot of damage because they're so stinking orange. And you see that it shot it at 3,950. So let's bring it. Now what I'm looking at here is I want this to turn a little blue because I know that's daylight out there. I want this to look a very natural color. I can even get down to saturation and take out a little bit of the orange, see how the orange kind of goes away. But I want that color to be there because if you take away too much orange, the wood doesn't look natural anymore. This wood table doesn't look natural anymore. So I want those oranges to stay there and we will fix that in just a second. Highlights all the way down. Uh, shadows, I bring them up a little bit and then I bring my blacks down a little bit. So what I want to do is have detail down there. See, it's kind of a dark exposure just a little bit. And now I know you're wondering, you know, these are blown out. That looks like crap. You can't even see those light bulbs right there. I know, just hold on. So then you look at the flash one. Now the flash one seems a little dark too. You have this issue, I did a house one time and there, were, there was not electricity on at all. No electricity. So sometimes that happens and you will run into this problem too. So this is a good video for you to watch. Same thing, highlights all the way down. Now you can see more detail. It's still blown out big time over there. Anyways, go down to the kind of the same white balance, get everything looking natural. You see that's still stupid orange. Let's bring that back down a little bit. Okay, let's do a little contrast, a little contrast. Uh, let's bring those shadows up. I wanna see inside of there. Bring these shadows up a little more. Now you'll notice from this photo that it will be so much easier to bring up shadows and get more detail than it is to have something blown out and bring it back down to where you can actually tell what it is. It makes it much more difficult. So just word to the wise. Then we have the window pool. So you can see it was kind of getting dark already. The sun's right there. I have it at 1 60th of a second. Now, some of you might do 1 60th of a second when it's bright sunlight outside. I don't do that. I will go all the way up till my sync speed allows me to, and then I will bring uh, my ISO down even further because I want it to be super dark. That way, when I bring up the exposure later, because it is too dark outside, it will illuminate this much more. A lot of times you'll be dealing with white right there around the trim. But in this particular room, they did not use white, they used this brown. Then I went over and did this just in case. I do that sometimes. I know that that was exposed well right there, but just in case sometimes I go over there and I get it one more time. And then we have our fourth shot, which is our whoop shot. So the whoop shot is in case I have any sort of weird reflection inside of the window and somehow messing things up, well, I can go in there and repair it pretty easily. It's gonna get the white balance really close to kind of what looks natural and what looks good that is outside. See that right there? Bring that exposure up just a tad. Yeah, these things are blown out. I'm not really worried about it because once I mix these into Photoshop and bring it back into Lightroom, it will give me a blank slate all over again with compiled image of all the images and then all these sliders and everything here in Lightroom, it'll be a new image starting all over and then I could bring the slider down again. I could bring the highlights down again. I could change the oranges a little bit and pinpoint more once I do all this process. So that still looks a little orange, but I don't want that orange to come out of the wood. I think that'd be pretty good right there. There's my flash, bring that exposure up just a little bit. See how that, this is what the flash does. It makes that the colors pop. It illuminates a lot. It gets a true white tone to it. It eliminates a lot of the color, what I call color pollution, the light pollution. And it makes it nice, crisp, and clean. 
So I click the very first image, I shift and click the very last image, I right click. You can see this is the same process as from when I took it into my folder into Lightroom. Now we're taking it from Lightroom into Photoshop, same, the exact same process. Now I wanna go up, when I right clicked over the photos, go to edit in, not edit in Photoshop, I want to open as layers in Photoshop. Now this is why I use Lightroom and Photoshop together because I can very easily go from one to the other, back and forth, back and forth. I do this with all my portraits. I do this with my wedding stuff because Photoshop is so easy to edit out skin issues, to smooth out the skin. Like it does it like that. It has very good capabilities. Lightroom is very spotty, no pun intended. Like you try to edit out some skin and it jumps to over here or, or it captures some of the eye and it blurs it funny right there. Photoshop is my go-to. I don't mess with anything in Lightroom, only my colors and uh, my corrections, my basic stuff like that. And then a little bit of tweaking with, with my presets for the style or the feel that I felt was in that moment of doing photos. So same thing, when you come in, to Photoshop from Lightroom. This top one will be highlighted automatically. Shift and click the bottom. Now that I have them all selected, go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. This little box is gonna pop up. Make sure you put the auto because of the barrel distortion of wide angle lenses. If you click any of these other ones, sometimes it can make it messy. So let's see how good of a job it does. You see a little bit on the side right there. It moved it a little bit. Well, then I go through and I make sure that I'm double checking my work. So I will click that eyeball. And so you see these solid lines that are fixed lines, not shadows, but they're actually fixed lines. What I do is I click that and see that those are staying the same. And as long as they're staying the same, it aligned well. Let me make it disappear. Oh yeah, we're all good. Let me see how much it corrected. And then later when we bring it into Lightroom, we'll crop it down a little bit, problem solved. Okay, go to the top layer. Now what I do is I Command J, duplicate. I go into luminosity mode. Hit Option or Alt, mask, I'm hiding it. And then Option or Alt, depends on if you're a Mac person or not. This is my flash, okay? This, let's go show you this. This is my window shot. So I'm taking all my window shots, bringing them, selecting them all, bringing them up to the top. I'm just gonna hide them for right now. So luminosity mode, the reason I did luminosity mode is because sometimes orange colors can really give a nasty cast and the luminosity mode brings in light and the normal mode brings in whatever's back there. So we have a black mask, we're trying to hide what is underneath. We don't want that coming through, we want to be able to control that. That's why I do it this way instead of the blending photos together and that whole process uh, is because I like to have the control over what exactly you see or what the agent sees. So B for brush. Now I wanna make sure that my hardness is all the way down. You can make your brush as big as you want, it doesn't matter, you're gonna be painting. Now I want my flow to be at five or 10%. Now how do I do that? Shift and then hit a number. And you can see right up here to my flow, shift, whatever number I'm going to, it moves it. So shift 10. Over here, black is hide, white is show. So right here, we have black, we're hiding. We wanna paint white over it and that will reveal what's on that layer underneath. And right here, we're in luminosity mode. Hit D and watch this change from the gray color to white and black, D. And then you can hit X and it will toggle back and forth. So let's say you paint, got some stuff right here you wanted to show, but then you're like, no, nah, I wanna change that. Well, you can go back over it. See, it covers it back up. Let's do a, a high flow so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So watch. See, I'm revealing what's underneath there. See it change right here? Hit X, I cover it right back up. Let's get rid of all that, because I don't want that in there. That was just an example, so you can know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so we hit X, I'm gonna put it back on 10% flow, make sure I am on my layer mask. Now, what I'm doing is I'm lightly bringing in, you see the light shift? That light shifts from the way that that flash hit it up in the corner, and now it's making it where it's the natural light in the room. You see it just shift. I just love the way it looks when it shifts. It looks nice and neat. And see that shine that was from that flash? We're just taking a little bit of that away. 
Just taking a little bit of that away. Now we want the ceiling to be a little brighter, kind of natural looking. Want to take some of that shine away from that flash. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. I'll make this a little bit smaller. And actually I want to get some of that natural, that natural light from the actual light that is there. See, there's light coming in right there. There's always gonna be light from the windows coming and hitting the ceiling, hitting the floors. Some people eliminate that altogether. I don't because you see it with your eyes. It's a natural thing. I just want a little more control where I can dull it down a little bit. You have to shine there, a little shine there. Now, when you use luminosity mode, anything on the uh, natural or the normal mode, blending mode layer that is also your ambient shot, it sometimes will put this little weird looking shadow where you paint it. Cause it's looking for color, but it's only getting light. So then it makes color. It gets a little stupid and complicated. I don't know how they would fix something like that, but I'm gonna show you how to fix it. So it's not a problem for you. So now I'm on the luminosity mode. And what I'm doing is just barely, see I just barely painted it in. I'm just trying to blend it. And that brings a little bit of that color back in. A little bit of this back in there. A little bit of that back in there. A little bit of that. See this house is making a little bit of orange, it's not that white anymore because luminosity will make it only look like white light and the normal blending mode will always bring back that color. Bring a little bit of that color over here and that'll orange up that floor a little bit, that natural wood look. We had a little bit of a a weird dark shadow over here, which shadows are fine, but you don't want it to be a, a really harsh orange looking shadow and the luminosity mode can sometimes do that. Just a little bit right there. Bring some color back into that wood, make it real nice. Now in luminosity mode, like I said with this, sometimes it can make a weird looking shadow. Sometimes it can do that with wood and it makes it look purple. So you just bring that normal mode in and it'll make it brown again every single time. It'll knock that purple right out and it will look brown again. Mm-hmm, towel. Okay, I'll fit it to screen. All right, so now let's go to the window. So, so you got a brush. Now you can bring up your, uh, bring up your flow. And we wanna paint in what's out there. See how it's messing all that up right there? Now watch this, I did that on purpose. Take it from normal to darken. Do you see that switch? Messed up to darken. Now what, what is it doing? It's a lot, it's taking all the things that we lit up with the light and it's canceling out and bringing what is darker from outside to the inside. And it darkens it all down nice and pretty and I'm painting all over it. See that light right there? So the whole process that we did if you have hard light coming in, it's the same thing. You just bump your shutter up a little more, use the exact same process, and you can paint it back in to look natural and kind of blurry like that very easily. So that's a pretty good outside exposure right there. So I didn't need to use any of my, my fourth shot just in case I have an accident, a reflection. See, look, that's what it looked like before, look like after. Now, <clears throat> For some people that may be a little dark, so I'm gonna show you how to adjust that. Brightness and contrast. Right click on that layer. Let's go down. Create clipping mask. See how the arrow goes boom? This will only affect the one directly below it. Nothing else. See it, how the windows are moving and nothing else? So you bring that exposure up just a little bit. Now you have a nice little outside. Okay, so once you have finished your edits, you don't have to worry about any of these. You don't have to do anything to them because we put that black layer mask on it and it covers up so we don't have to worry about what it's gonna do. So now click this little three line right here, or maybe four, it's hard. Do a flatten image. And while you're in Photoshop, hit Command S and you can see it loading. It will automatically bring it into Lightroom as a new image. See, I told you. Now you can bring those highlights down. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but eh, it's not bad. And then we can do 
A little bit of saturation, and a little negative saturation actually. And we can do a sharpening. So something that's cool on the sharpening, if you click Alt or Option on this mask, hold it down and click, slide that joker, and you have controlled sharpening of what that's gonna make sharp. You can see exactly the white lines is what's gonna make it sharp, which is pretty cool. I like my radius a little smaller. I don't want big sharps. I want little tiny, little fine stuff. Um, there's no noise in this one, obviously, because we use, I like to, so I didn't do my verticals, but sometimes I snap the vertical and there it is. Put a little crop on it, this little wall like that and move it just a tad and boom, nothing on the outlines. Remember when it snapped earlier? So we have that. Sometimes I like to put a little vignette on there, just a little bit. Darkens the corners just a tad. And then we have our finished image. You can see clearly outside, you actually have a nice little sunlight coming in, shining through the trees. You got glowing lights. They're extremely glowing. I don't like it, but it's just what it is. Comment below on a issue that you are having in your editing process, or maybe you think this is taking too long. I actually am going to be putting out a video very soon that is a quick way to do it while you're taking the photo, doing the exposure right there in the camera and only taking maybe three shots and using probably only two of them. So that will eliminate your process. And I'll also show you how to make a action in Lightroom, I mean, sorry, an action in Photoshop that will help you click a button and it will be done. Thank y'all. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video with a friend that may be struggling and needs to see how the real estate stuff is done. Thank y'all and we'll see you next time. now smile on your brother everybody again together try to love one another right now right now right now